but today the modern team out of their dressing room all such well-known names and Paul Lynch superstitiously never puts on his shirt until he's just about ready to face the crowd Eric Cantona what has he got in store for us today team's got in store for us today it's the perfect mix for a cup final on paper south versus north two popular clubs with class players and they get the finest of receptions These pictures, as ever, being watched all over the world. And we're pleased to be joined on a day like this by so many football fans from so many other countries who enjoy their cup final courtesy of the BBC pictures. 62 countries today watching these scenes. the Duchess being brought forward by Subvert Millership on the right, chairman of the FA, and Graham Kelly, the chief executive behind, and an umbrella is suitably produced for Her Royal Highness, <laughs> and much needed as we stand for the national anthem. alphabetical order it's Chelsea first as the teams are presented to Her Royal Highness the Duchess of Kent who's been such a supporter of the cup final in recent years she's uh, been almost a regular in fact and Dennis Wise the Chelsea captain taking her down the line no need to worry about the Jonsons and the Kjellbergs meeting our royal family they speak perfect English few words for uh, little Mark Steen and Gavin Peacock Chelsea's joint scoring partnership top scorers John Spencer they are small as Desmond said these Chelsea forwards aren't they and so across to meet the team attempting the double Steve Bruce whose side hope to make Manchester United history today Were there a few words for you, Trevor, at 
this time when you played in the cup final? Well, I think it, it's, it passes so quickly, that little spell, that uh, you know, I think also the, the guest of honour doesn't like to linger too long because she can see the, the footballers all trying to do their exercise and then courteously that they stop as she comes along. She had a few words for Ryan Giggs, I saw. Well, it's a, I mean, it's an occasion that Manchester United now are beginning to get used to, and I'm sure are going to get used to a, a game. But you know, there's no greater occasion than a cup final. And as an individual, as a player, as, as much as you want the team to well, more than anything, you want yourself to have a decent game. Eric Cantona, let me tell you, can speak a little bit of English when he wants to, and I'm sure he found it there when uh, Her Royal Highness stopped for a few words with him. Referee David Ellery, the Harrow schoolmaster, and his uh, linesman today, Paul Regere of Tipton and Graham Barber of Guildford. They were the uh, last to be introduced, along with the reserve official Gerald Ashby of Worcester. And I understand that outside the ground there are people who still can't get in. Uh, I presume they're ticket holders who just have come a bit late. Uh, but that's going to be close to kickoff now. Now, let's just take a final check on the teams. Starting with Chelsea. And uh, for Glenn Hoddle, it was his decision to leave himself out and make himself substitute. The uh, team there, including a number of players who are not English. Uh, Steen, who's just come back from injury, born in South Africa. Karin, the goalkeeper from the Soviet Union, as was Russian. Kjellberg is a Dane, Jonsson is a Norwegian, there are three Scots in the side, but it's the team that was expected, the team that started last week, and Glenn Hoddle preferring to keep himself in reserve. Now, what about the formation that uh, Jimmy and uh, Alan were discussing earlier, Trevor? Well, I think the two central defenders, Johnson and Kjellberg, uh, are, are going to have their hands full with Mark Hughes, who I thought had an outstanding last few weeks uh, to the end of the season, and it's such a focal point to United's attack. Also, number 18 there, the anchor man in midfield, Eddie Newton, who will flip between picking up Cantona as he comes deep, and then having to keep an eye also on Roy Keane's forward runs. Uh, and then, of course, the flexibility of that small attacking five who do interchange on occasion so dangerously. Well, let's turn to Manchester United. They have seven names on the sheet who bring a different nationality to this traditionally English occasion. The Dane Schmeichel in goal, fast fit. Then the Ukrainian Kanchelskis, who survived the late injury scare that was kept very quiet. There are two Irishmen, Irwin and Keane, two Welshmen, Hughes and Giggs. And, of course, there's the first Frenchman to play in the FA Cup final, number seven, Eric Cantona. And I would imagine that formation is pretty well established too. Well, it's a typical solid back four, isn't it, that they've had all season. A lot of people saying whether the, the small, nippy Chelsea forwards might cause them a problem. Uh, I think they'd like to squeeze up that back four, and perhaps they've got to be wary of, of people running from deep, like Peacock, and, and trying to play the offside and not get in the decision. Chelsea and Giggs, I think, will find it difficult with Sinclair and Clark, both two very quick fullbacks. So it'll be interesting to see if they can have the, the influence that many people think they might. And then, of course, Hughes and Cantona, sometimes so irresistible. We wonder what mood the pair will be in today. So the scene is set as we await the meeting of the captains. The Royal Box now filling up rapidly. And the Chelsea chairman something of a character to say the least Ken Bates and I believe in his left ear he's wearing an earring which was a little bet he had with fellow director Matthew Harding in the third round Matthew Harding who's put five million pounds into Chelsea to build a new stand used to stand on the shed and wear an earring and there it is he challenged the chairman to wear it on cup final day and you just caught sight of it there Ken Bates <laughs> what a character um, meantime down on the pitch, there aren't too many players wearing earrings, I don't think. Kjellberg with his contact lens is about the nearest we can get. Uh, the two captains, Dennis Wise on the left of Chelsea, Steve Bruce on the right of Manchester United. Referee Ellery overseeing proceedings. Extreme left is Paul Roger. The uh, linesman will be on the Royal Box side. Graham Barber, the other linesman and the reserve official Gerald Ashby as they observe the toss of the coin and we're nearly set to go now can Mark Hughes 
continue his amazing Wembley record this season. Scored here in the Charity Shield, scored in the Coca-Cola final, scored here in the FA Cup semi-final. Can he make it four today with the assistance of Eric Cantona? And as Desmond Lynham pointed out, Chelsea have never faced Cantona and Hughes this season in the same game. As for Chelsea, well, they've got some Tom Thumb figures in their attack, haven't they? <laughs> Steen and Spencer, five foot six each, Peacock, five feet eight, and Little Wise as well. So we'll see just what that mix produces as the 1994 FA Cup final, the 113th in the history of this famous competition, is about to get underway with the rain still drifting down slowly at Wembley. Weather's really changed since this morning. The pitch could be a bit slippy on top, and it's Chelsea in blue, Manchester United in red, Steve Clark on the ball. Steen, Irwin for Manchester United. Any quick early thoughts, Trevor? Well, it was going to be interesting to see how Manchester United solved the problem of Peacock. I wonder whether Paul Ince might do a job, but they're, they're leaving Keane and Ince there playing as two central midfielders, and I think Pallister and Bruce are going to just have to sort out Peacock as he makes those late runs. We'll keep an eye on it. Along with 80,000 in the stadium and millions watching here and worldwide. This is Ince. Just stretching a bit there, Cantona. Now Sinclair for Chelsea, testing Parker. Thoughtful player manager. Peter Shreves to the right of the picture there, the Chelsea coach. Been to Wembley 11 times and lost only once. Clark. This is Sinclair. Getting forward early on the left back. It's a good run too. And he had Peacock outside him. And Sinclair's still there. Oh, and they dived in front of him to block it. Ince for one was back there. This is Giggs for Manchester United. Just look at the pace. Oh, Erland Johnson was the player in the way. And David Eller has gone straight to his pocket. This is going to be a booking for Erland Johnson on Ryan Giggs. Well, that was the, the classic situation, wasn't it? Chelsea very unlucky at one end because I, I thought if, if actually Sinclair hadn't stopped it, Spencer would have had a clear chance. But then the counter-attack, Manchester United so good, and, and that is a bad challenge. David Ellery immediately imposing the control and a booking and a yellow card. Not the ideal start for a defender because that is going to make it a difficult 88 minutes for Johnson on a slippery surface like this. Absolutely, it was an exciting 60 seconds because, as you say, the joker in the pack was Sinclair at the other end in the Chelsea uh, front line all of a sudden. Kanchelskis for Manchester United. Cantona, the player near, is this. Burley was with him. Keane drives it. Well, I hope the start is an indication of what's to come. I don't mean the booking, I mean the, uh, the pace at which the game has begun. Here's Keane. It's a throw in to Manchester United, this side of the flag. Steve Bruce now joins the Manchester United attack. This is Cantona looking for Hughes. Good ball in. Who's he got with him? Still Hughes. Straight to Burley, uh, then Ince. Now Pallister. What would have happened if he hadn't, if Johnson hadn't checked Giggs there, Trevor? Was that a that wasn't a goal-scoring opportunity as such, was it? No, he was actually going down the, the right-hand side. There were one or two covering defenders, but it would have been particularly dangerous. And, and Johnson at that stage wasn't too sure. It was a clumsy challenge, wasn't it? Because uh, you know, he, he, it was obvious that he was going to get uh, quite seriously hurt, perhaps, and also a, a booking was going to have a result because it looked uh, quite a frightening sort of challenge when, when he actually did a bit of a somersault and landed heavily, Giggs, and of course players reacted, supporters jump up, and I think David Ellery thought, I've got to clamp down on this straight away. Well, I think David Ellery did right, because uh, referees have been accused in the past of not being firm enough early in cup finals. I remember the controversy in 91 over Gascoigne and Roger Milford in that game. And uh, David Ellery went straight to his pocket there.
This is Pallister. Johnson this time gets his head to it. This is it. Hughes got uh, Kanchelskis wide. Ince is in the penalty area with his arm up. It's Sinclair who robs Kanchelskis. Nice touch by Cantona. Giggs. Oh. Well, it's been a lively first five minutes, hasn't it? Yeah, what I've been a bit surprised at is how defenders have, have been quite happy to, to surge forward and, and get and make the extra attackers. Initially, you think sometimes it's going to be a bit of a cagey start, but uh, we had Sinclair early on, didn't we, in that first minute, and uh, Bruce and Pallister had a shot, and the fullbacks are, are pushing forward for United, and it seems that both managers have said, well, let's, let's enjoy ourselves. Yeah, I've got a theory about that, Trevor. I think because both teams have already qualified for Europe, you know, it's taken a lot of the tension and heat out of this cup final. Often teams come here with European football as the, as the prize if they win, and not if they lose. This doesn't apply today because, as our viewers will know, both these clubs are already guaranteed European football next season. Pallister on wise. The reason for that being that Manchester United are already in the Champions League and therefore Chelsea will go into the European Cup Winners' Cup, win or lose today. Now they've got a free kick, Chelsea. Burley. Irwin, Hughes, marked by Kielberg. Bruce. This is a bit more of the pattern one would have anticipated. Chelsea dropping back to the halfway line and saying Manchester United, come on to us. That's what Pallister did. Keen on Peacock. Just a word this time. Forward by Steve Clark, who's just been recalled to the Scotland squad. Indeed, his fellow defender, Jonsson, has just been uh, called up by Norway after three and a half years. So Chelsea's players are getting recognition internationally, just as Manchester United's are used to it. Here's Giggs, the Welshman. Cantona through the middle. That was Jonsson. Cantona away by Wise, only to Bruce, this is Keane, wants Kanchelskis to make a run but Sinclair has blocked that route, here comes Paul Parker joining the attack, still Keane, Hughes, well one thing's for certain, it's not going to be a subdued final in the seats, the crowd are making a contribution already, that was a bit awkward, it was uh, Bruce on Spencer, the referee let play go. Well, it was definitely a body check, wasn't it? That uh, linesman was right on the spot as well, and uh, definitely think Chelsea should have had the free kick. Irwin. Giggs. That's a good ball. Parker, Kanchelskis. That looked like a lunge from behind as well, but the referees let that go, and Steen is through the middle. But uh, the game half stopped then because Manchester United were expecting a free kick.
comes Irwin, he does love to overlap. Shade better perhaps on his right foot, this is Ince. Pallister. Keane. Now then, it was Keane who missed out to Wise, this is Steen, Spencer's in the middle, further over. They're both quick. Steen takes on Ince. That was an example of what Chelsea are looking for, to win possession, then quickly release it into those channels for Steen and Spencer to use their pace to run out the Manchester United defence. Ten minutes gone in the FA Cup final, no score. Burley lobs the ball in for Chelsea. This is Eddie Newton, number 18. Spencer. And a free kick given to Manchester United. Ince is spending a lot of time just in front of the back four just at the moment, Trevor. Well, Chelsea do like to sort of interchange and then make those deep runs. And I think Manchester are concerned about Peacock or somebody just time in their run, uh, which is going to break the sort of offside tactics that Manchester United like to do, squeeze up. And uh, it's just a case of Ince and, and Keane, of course, likes to get forward more. So Ince is the more holding central midfielder. I, I do think... Parker and Irwin are their outlet today because even in this first 10 minutes Burley and Wise are quite keen to tuck in they're not playing really wide they're tucking in to, to help bolster up that midfield area and I think Parker and Irwin could be the outlet and Chelsea is through here that was a good ball hit long and Chelsea were caught on the inside of the fullback I just think Sinclair was a shade slow realising what Kanchelskis was about this is Newton Wise, Burley, Spencer far side, and that's not the kind of ball if you're five feet six that you really want. <laughs> and this is Cantona, Hughes, Schielberg comes across. Clark, Wise, Peacock is just darting forward now, Peter Schmeichel of course who uh, a couple of weeks ago everyone thought was going to miss the cup final, ankle ligaments, be interesting just to see if he has got his full mobility back when perhaps one or two through balls come and you expect him perhaps to come out and pick them up. Yes, of course, he missed the Coca-Cola final here through suspension, so he'll be uh, mighty relieved to be here today. This is Parker. Cantona. Now Kanchelskis makes another forward run. Kjellberg with the header. Burley. Craig Burley, 24 is his number. Still, of course, squad numbers on the players' backs at this stage, although I think by next year we might be back to 1-11 to from what I've heard. Many people will wish that we were. This is Bruce. Giggs, a, a run from left to right behind the defence. Wasn't quite found. Wise. And he looks for Steen, who was found. Burley. Wise. It went sort of through Peacock and wide. A great crossfield ball by Dennis Wise there to, to find Steen. I'm sure full of confidence, called up for Terry Venable's England squad, perhaps hoping to get a game against Greece or Norway. And he's made two or three very astute passes in this opening spell. And Alex Ferguson never looks particularly happy during a game, but he, you'll know at the moment that both sides are, have had an even amount of possession. Hughes. And the chest control of Hughes just too far ahead of Canton.
Giggs turns away from Eddie Newton and Peacock, and it's Giggs. John Spencer putting himself about there for Chelsea. This is Pallister. Irwin. Chelsea supporters making an inordinate amount of noise. They're making up for 24 years of lost time here. This is Keane. Offside flag is up. They haven't, they haven't been to an FA Cup final, Chelsea, since 1970. And their fans are determined to savour the occasion the fact they're in Europe next year they'll probably always also like to remind you that when they were in Europe last time they won the Cup Winners Cup indeed they did 1971 this is Keane Kanchelskis is outside him comes up a Chelsea player and Karin gathers Don't tell me that because supporters have to sit down, you don't get the same atmosphere because that's just been disproved in the first 15 minutes here today. Burley. header by Erlan Jonsson, it left Hughes on the ground but it was fair, Wise looking for Spencer, came off Bruce and uh, Sinclair is taking the opportunity to get up from left back whenever he can I've been quite surprised, I mean he's not his strongest part of his game, the distribution side, I'm sure more than anyone he's probably benefited from having Glenn Hoddle as manager now because uh, Glenn's training would, would help get a lot more touches and, and work on that distribution side for Frank Sinclair and uh, there, I'm sure he's keeping himself fit, but at the moment, Sinclair's made one or two surprising forward runs, which you don't normally associate with him, because he can be a central defender. He's playing left back in, in recent weeks, and uh, of course, his pace is, is useful going forward as well as Kanchelskis on the defensive side. Well, one of Chelsea's former players is now the England coach, and uh, Terry Venables, like all good international bosses has brought his pen and paper with him. He's got a game here on Tuesday against Greece and one against Norway a week tomorrow. Some of the players out there today are in the squad, like Parker here and Ince. Cantona back to Ince. Hughes touched again for Ince. Involved in the move three times here, Paul Ince. Four now. Good advantage by David Ellery, no need to stop the play there, Peacock. There is now. He's not happy about that challenge. Steve Bruce is at the heart of that, and players on both sides angry here. Looks like another booking to me. Well, he's going to be a booking uh, again. I don't like to see players reacting quite as fervently as they are. David Early is the referee, he's in control, he's made the decisions that he has done already this afternoon, and I think uh, just leave it to the referee, don't try and claim all the time. I mean, it was late, uh, and Spencer sort of, I think, made a, a bit of a meal of it, but Bruce has got booked, and the referee, again, is in the position to deal with it. I don't like to see half a dozen players then going up and, and trying to get in on the act. Well, uh, Steve Bruce, the captain, gets the yellow card, as Jonsson did earlier, so there are two central defenders now in the last chance saloon, really. Uh, John Spencer back on his feet. And a free kick to Chelsea. Steen, Ince, Peacock, Newton. Oh, and Keane got a bit mixed up there. This is Burley. That's a corner. 
to Chelsea. Now this is where Jakob Kjellberg and Erland Jonsson can both lend height to the Chelsea cause and Sinclair. They'll all be up for this. Wise, who really is one of the best corner takers in the business. Uh, Manchester United dealt with that fairly comfortably coming up to the 20 minute mark here in the FA Cup final there's no score, it's still raining there have been two bookings Burley return ball to him from Peacock Steen near post away by Pallister Peacock again Giggs Eddie Newton Sinclair, only to Ince. Hughes. Giggs, not quite. Well seen by Clark, very well seen. Peacock. Well, it's a very even 20 minutes, isn't it? There's very little to choose between the sides. Chelsea in midfield, very hungry, quick, closing Manchester United down, and they're not getting the space, as happened in the previous two games, which, of course, Chelsea ended up edging by those Gavin Peacock goals. Now, plenty of homework's gone into this match. Peacock, scorer in both the league games, enjoys a brief exchange with David Ellery. Sinclair. In the way was Keane. Oh, Parker lost out there. Sinclair again. Little touch to him by Peacock. Sinclair's cross. Oh, and Steen came in, and I think Bruce left that for Schmeichel, and there was a misunderstanding. Oh, Sinclair again, isn't it? I mean, that was one source of, of danger that I hadn't anticipated. I must say, he's very quick, but not so often in those attacking positions. It was a little bit of a misunderstanding. Steen was beyond the near post, couldn't flick it with the outside or try his left and, and then just run it out of play. Quite a lively opening here, but uh, as Trevor Brooking says, it's pretty even. A lot of movement about the pitch. But as yet, neither goalkeeper severely tested. Chelskis has started to run again on the inside of Sinclair, found by Ince, and Dimitri Karin comes and collects. It was a great run from, from Chelskis there, but you saw Sinclair, he, he definitely had the, the pace to go with him, and, and he wasn't going to get away with him, but because it ran forward to Karin, and uh, but that's something Giggs and Konchelskis cracked three or four times, two each, they, they've made those diagonal runs going from out wide and making the runs through the middle. just came off Palace's head, Spencer's in there, Ince, Cantona and Eddie Newton who's sticking very close to Cantona in that area of the field and he outwits him and robs him of the ball and he's found Spencer and look where Schmeichel is and they'll need help, Pallister it was who got it away, misjudgment by Schmeichel surely, back in by Burley, well 
it's still on for Steen and Irwin gets pulled down that's a free kick the other way but Cantona lost the ball to Eddie Newton and when John Spencer got in I wasn't sure that Schmeichel was best advised to be there well once he started to come he had to commit himself it was a bit fortunate for United they've got three covering defenders there it could have dropped for Steen but in the end Schmeichel got the vital touch so his decision was the right one. If he hadn't, of course, uh, it was on Spencer's weaker side. He's, he favours the right more than the left. But again, it was good movement. And Eddie Newton, who I thought was man of the match against Luton in the semi-final, has, has had a terrific opening period. It's Hughes. Yes, it wasn't quite the rush of blood for which <laughs> Schmeichel finished getting sent off for in the earlier round, was it, when he was... Uh, he missed the, uh, well, he didn't miss the ball, but he handled it against Charlton and was suspended. But he was, as you say, goalkeepers make up their minds, and if they get a touch, they're proved right. If it had gone the other way, he might have been looking back at the first goal. Burley. Peacock, Peacock, oh he's hit the bar, so near to three out of three, Gavin Peacock, <laughs> and play goes on while the crowd recover their breath, Hughes, what a let off for Manchester United, no chance for the goalkeeper there, spectacular moment after 26 minutes from the man who always seems to do well against these opponents instead it might just uh, inject some urgency into United it's keen Irwin I was just about to shout goal then I can tell you but then so were 80,000 others. <laughs> this is Parker. Kanchelskis. Kanchelskis got it back from Hughes. Comes out to Parker. Danger here still. Not now. Poor delivery. Yes, that's the weakest part of Paul Parker's game, the final cross, but Kanchelskis for the first time able to, to really make the run, but look, it's Gavin Peacock, flicks it onto his left foot, he's a two-footed player, loops it over, Schmeichel had no chance, another yard further out, it would have dipped in under the crossbar, wonderful bit of skill, and I mean, that would have been amazing if he'd have got a, another goal against him, and I, I think for a, a five or six minute spell, Chelsea now will feel a bit unlucky that they haven't gone ahead, Glenn Hoddle, his side have enjoyed a a wonderful little attacking spell, that near chance just off the line, and then that one against the crossbar. Yes, it would have joined that uh, special brand of classic Wembley goals, that one, wouldn't it? It would have gone uh, in the archives in the top section, but uh, because it just hit the uh, top of the goal and came back, it'll only be remembered as a nimis. But it's certainly a warning to Manchester United and confirms what you've been saying about uh, Chelsea. They're bristling with ideas. And their movement is giving some concern to the champions, but this is Giggs at the other end. Cantona to Ince. Outside him, Kanchelskis. Four now the other way for Manchester United. Hughes. Keane. Parker. Oof. It was meant for Giggs. Unfortunately, again, it just hurried the through ball there and it ran away. And Manchester United, in those attacking situations, are just conceding possession a bit too frequently, I would have thought, for Alex Ferguson's comfort. Well, Chelsea know that Aston Villa matched and uh, more than matched Manchester United here in the Coca-Cola final so they've come into the game unafraid after all they are the underdogs in fact uh, rank outsiders if you look at the pre-match prices 
And uh, they've certainly had the better, I would say, of the first half hour, Chelsea. He's got a knock there, for Chelsea, but you say uh, they had the better, they definitely have now. And definitely as far as chances, I mean, Dimitri Curry, apart from a couple of crosses, is a quite a gentle first cup final, isn't he, after half an hour's play. So, quarter of an hour left in the first half. And uh, the Premiership champions have got it all on here to stamp their authority on this cup final. They haven't done it yet. This is Cantona who will try now. Kanchelskis. He stopped because he was offside. Steen has only played what is his second game in about nine weeks following his ankle injury side well I hope this uh, rain doesn't dampen the enthusiasm of the supporters it's been coming down for what a couple of hours now it was forecast I have to say despite the fact that we woke up to brilliant sunshine in London here's Giggs Ince Cantona spreading to the right Erlan Jonsson go off oh, look at the way he brought that down but the pass which followed was not quite as perfect. Very Cantona can be so flamboyant, can't he, when the little flicks come off, but at the moment, Chelsea dealt with him and the rest of the United side extremely well, and he's had very few opportunities to show those skills. Yes, I think there was always a chance that this would be a cup final between... Uh, who's been brought down Steve Bruce must be careful he's been booked now this is where Dennis Wise who made the winning goal for Wimbledon from a position like this in 88 can place free kicks so precisely he's got Jonsson and Kjellberg up on the far side waiting to come in Jonsson the nearer one in, in fact. Kjellberg came in there. Oh, and offside. The flag's up. That wouldn't have mattered. There was a Chelsea player in an offside position. He was coming in far side and a corner off Clark. Well, that was when Kanchelskis had to take a chance with his left foot. Uh, you could see there was three Manchester United players. Paul Ince winning possession, releasing him on the left-hand side. A quick early cross with the left foot before Chelsea got back would have been the ideal, but they, he came in on his right foot and by then it got blocked out and he's only got a corner for his troubles. Well, Pallister has come into the near post position. Bruce is up as well. There's Steve Bruce, and uh, went out all the way to Cantona. Here's Kanchelskis, in again for Bruce, Jonsson. Steen. I was about to say a minute or two ago before that free kick that it was billed as a cup final between Manchester United's spontaneity and possibly Chelsea's strategy because with that offside against Giggs, uh, Glenn Hoddle and Peter Shreves having thought their way to two victories already in the league. 
have obviously got a game plan here which in Chelsea's case seems to have worked pretty well for 35 minutes and that's a good 35 minutes psychologically for Chelsea because if you're Manchester United you lost twice in the league you want to assert yourself and impose your style on Chelsea but I think in the opening period it is Chelsea once again that have got that initiative and would have sown one or two doubts in the United team forward by Clark flick on by Spencer Wise so we've got 10 minutes left in the first half it's 0-0 and that long kick is searching for Kanchelski so over the head of Sinclair now Cantona's up in support so is Hughes Giggs is moving in from the left hand side and Kielberg beats Hughes He can't go back because Steen had read that. from Peacock oh and the little back flick by Spencer only went to Keane and now Giggs has made a run left to right again wants it played now by Kanchelskis who then moves inside to join Cantona and Hughes in the penalty area that's Cantona brilliantly taken by Dimitri Corrine as Hughes threw himself forward well, a lovely flowing move from Manchester United their best to date Involving both flank players, a good deep cross. Cantona unselfishly trying to knock it back across, but Karin, very agile, made up ground and held on to it very well. Well, they say at Chelsea that this goalkeeper from uh, Russia has got what they call the best spring of any they've worked with. He's so agile. Eddie Nijveski, who works with the goalkeepers at Chelsea, was talking in glowing terms of his prowess in that sort of situation to me earlier this week. There's Eddie, in fact, on the left there of uh, Peter Shreves as uh, the map player manager goes back to the bench, having just survived a scare. But it was a brilliant save. Oh, that's not a brilliant header, though, by Parker. This is Spencer for Chelsea. That's the area that's left Manchester United down. That the back four look very nervy and, and, and giving away the ball far too easily and the service from the back isn't good and and whereas you would expect them to be quite composed bring the ball forward and try and commit the Chelsea midfield at the moment they're knocking in a quite a few hopeful balls and, and giving it away Peacock to Spencer across goes Keane in fact Keane and uh, Ince being occupied more defensively just at present which says something about the way the first half has gone I think United would be the first to say they haven't played well up to now, but the important thing as such is that they haven't gone behind during a, a spell where they're not at their best, and so perhaps if they can hang on, get the half-time, sort one or two things out, their better spell is still to come, whereas Chelsea will feel they should be ahead by now. Well, Chelsea have forced another corner over there, which uh, Wise is perfectly placed to uh, deliver. And again, the two uh, overseas players from the back come forward. Spencer back to Wise this is Kilberg jumping with Pallister it's Peacock getting a foot in now then he claims a free kick and gets one I don't know whether Glenn Hoddle said first one there or what but uh, it's 
a free kick to Chelsea in a very central position and Dennis Wise would I presume be favourite here I, think so. I wonder if anyone noticed if Glenn Hoddle just pop in and take the free kick and then nip back to the bench again because he would be the ideal one in this situation but I don't think they quite get away with that I don't think Wise would let him actually because uh, he prides himself a bit on these himself the Chelsea captain however we'll see what happens Steve Clark is uh, taking a long run up he likes to have a shot as well whether uh, he'd just go for power rather than a curler from Wise and Sinclair's also there That's wise, and it's come off the wall. And it was all a bit of an anti-climax. Well played by Spencer. Then Peacock. And then it was Eddie Newton. Yeah, I have to say, John, I think... Uh... Glenn Hoddle might have done a bit better with that free kick than Dennis Wide ended up, but uh, it was one of those seemed to be caught in two mind and, and didn't have the power anyway and of course it didn't make it over the wall and there he is telling Peter Shreves where it went wrong Well of course he has got a record of scoring, uh, Glenn Hoddle in uh, Wembley FA Cup Finals well he scored here last year didn't he for Swindon in the playoffs Now Hughes took it away from Jonsson nicely. Kanchelskis. Keane. Kanchelskis, if he can reach it. He did, and it had to be turned away by Wise. So now the emphasis switches, and it's Manchester United who have a corner, which Ryan Giggs will take. And it gives uh, Palace to the chance to come forward and Bruce. Off Kareem there stretching and Steve Bruce tried to retrieve it on the other side and got another corner out of it. Kareem did quite well in the end because he got a bit underneath it. Was never going to be able to catch it then and so just got the hand to it which took it out of the danger area. Bruce is up there again. just trying to pull away but uh, the linesman on the far side had his flag up for offside and uh, we're going to enter the last couple of minutes now of the first half no score but uh, up here we feel Chelsea ahead on points but as Trevor said that might not be a bad thing even if you're a United supporter their best is still to come this is Newton Hughes really opening out the play there and more often than not Paul Parker is their man who can build up from there because Dennis Wise is tucking in Kanchelskis man over in the middle oh if the cross had been anything like Hughes has gone on his knees and slammed the floor in frustration because all Kanchelskis had to do was to deliver a good pass in and they had a man spare Cantona and Hughes were up against one defender and Kanchelskis got it wrong corner instead Pallister near post Bruce comes in oh that was an opportunity wasn't it yes in those situations I mean Ken Chels is normally on the right hand side on his right foot uh, does put over a good cross it didn't come that time and because he had that good situation on the left hand side but at the moment it is though that final ball that is so often letting United down and, and not actually giving them even the shooting chance and Kareen apart from as to say one or two little scares has had quite a comfortable first half yes that header across by Cantona was his only real save wasn't it one corner to deal with um... Bruce 
again, Peacock. And the free kick is quickly taken to Cantona. Chelsea crowding him out, hustling him, bustling him. <laughs> That's the plan, and it worked there. This is Clark. Sinclair to Wise. Challenge was by Ince. Now Kanchelskis. Giggs is on the right. Cantona. And the little touches are just not coming off for the Frenchman at the moment. They're not actually being able to get the, the support from midfielder that, that Keenan Inch usually give them either. I mean, on most occasions, there's only two or three men going forward because it's and Keen are so involved with the, with the diamond quartet of, of Chelsea that keep tucking in, hustling Cantona, as we saw just now, that they're having then to, to get back defensively and they can't get forward into the penalty area as often as we've seen them throughout the season. Slippy on top. Been plenty of rain to uh, give this pitch that uh, greasy feel. So, as you can see from the screen, it's uh, into stoppage time now. Hasn't been too much of that, I don't think. A uh, couple of early knocks when the trainers were on. Spencer. Now then, it's Steen. What a great ball by Spencer. Steen gets it down, drives himself a little wide, enables Bruce to get a challenge in. It's three or four times Steen's sort of taken up that position, hasn't he, in, in between the two and, and, and been found by a crossfield ball. His first touch just let him down and took him a bit too wide. It was a great ball by uh, little John Spencer. This is Ince. Giggs, Newton, well if Chelsea have got some sort of Indian sign on Manchester United, having beaten them twice in those Premiership games, not much has happened in the first half to suggest that uh, they can't keep that record. Here we are. Oh, yeah, he's... Yeah. Okay. Consternation in his face. With well, his number two, Brian Kidd, there. They're discussing tactics, and they'll have, he'll have said all he's got to say at half-time. I, I would imagine the tee would have been flying somewhere in the restroom at half-time. <laughs> uh, but he's the type of manager that can get his players going. You know, he's very passionate about the game. As I said, I think Manchester come out and they'll fire him. OK, thanks, gentlemen. Let's see what happens then as we rejoin Trevor and John Mott. Yes, there was a, a freshness on the face of uh, Glenn Hoddle and Chelsea when they came out there, wasn't there? And a, a distinct frown, Trevor, on the face of the Manchester United manager. Well, sure, there has been a, a fairly heated exchange because uh, more than anything, they haven't done themselves justice. And Alex Ferguson said into the build-up, you know, we won the championship now, and, and whilst we'd like to do the double, you know, hopefully the players now can go out and relax themselves. There's not the pressure. But they're, they're into the European Cup, and, and they can enjoy themselves and, and play their football. But they have been allowed to by a very good Chelsea side, who, who, as we say, look very positive and confident coming out for this second half as well. They should, because they know that they've dominated that first 45 minutes. That nagging doubt will be, we must get a goal. And, and Manchester United now, as Alan said, surely, you know, they've got to step up a gear. My mind was just drifting back, you know, to Boxing Day when Chelsea were one from bottom in the Premiership and there were all sorts of lurid headlines about crisis and would Glenn Hoddle last the season? Some people were querying, well, uh, <laughs> suddenly in the last uh, four or five months, things have certainly turned and uh, the things that he's been working on, some of them were evident in the first half. And uh, as he takes his seat uh, for the second stage of this FA Cup final, we too wonder whether we might see him as a player before the afternoon is out. He's
tended to come on for Craig Burley in recent matches because uh, Burley's been having a little bit of a problem um, with his hamstrings, which is why he wears the cycling shorts. Anyway, we're into the second half now. There's Craig Burley. His uncle George played here in uh, a cup final. George Burley in the Ipswich team who won the cup here in 78. Spencer just losing his balance there for a moment, but he'll get a free kick out of that. Challenged by Irwin. And Chelsea start the second half on the attack. With some of the supporters still taking their seats, we've got a free kick out there. Um, Kjellberg is up, so is Jonsson, so is Singbear. And Irwin out, Peacock back in. Oof, Sinclair was swinging at the volley before the ball was taken from him. Still the rain comes down, in fact it's driving quite heavily now here at Wembley. Peacock, little touch, Spencer, Bruce tangles with him, this is Kanchelskis. Now then, just wonder, uh, <laughs> that's had a bit of an Achilles injury, Glenn Hoddle, he was getting treatment at the training ground yesterday when I called in. Anyway, here's Cantona to Hughes, and back again towards Cantona. Eddie Newton. And that's a good player. And he finds Clark. Possibly one of the more unsung Chelsea players, Newton, but he's uh, having a good match. He's had a good season. This is Irwin for the champions. And he puts Giggs in against Clark. And David Ellery following up quickly has given the free kick in Giggs' favour. Plenty of. Uh, doubts about that from Clark but um, Manchester United supporters at that end very pleased and uh, up comes Steve Bruce into the area Karine punching came off the head of Peacock in fact in the end this is Keane now it's Parker Irwin full back to full back to Giggs but good cover, Burley, Clark. Cantona looks for Hughes, Erlan Jonsson across, needs to be cleared by Kielberg. And Chelsea again with some nice touch play, this is Wise. And he's got room to move here, he's found Peacock. Spencer and Steen well forward, others square. Now that came off a Manchester United player to Schmeichel, but common sense says it was not an intentional pass to the goalkeeper. No, I don't think even the, the most hardest of uh, Chelsea supporters could justify the fact that uh, that was deliberate. But... Oh, Kjellberg only to Cantona. Hughes, Giggs, what a shot. A bit more positive from United at the opening. Uh, I thought Dennis Irwin's uh, through ball to Giggs just now was about the best ball that we've seen from the, one of the defenders, and, and that was what was certainly lacking from that first 45 minutes, and uh, Giggs has come into it that much more from the service. And it's important that Manchester United somehow lift their supporters, because the noise has always been coming at this cup final from the Chelsea end. Manchester United have been quite muted because they haven't had a lot of attacks to get excited about. 79,634 is the official attendance figure put out by Wembley. And the uh, 80,000 capacity never quite reached because there are one or two uh, restricted view seats not used. Here's Steen. 
Spencer is square. This is Peacock. Burley, who can crack them from there. In fact, he scored uh, Craig Burley in rounds three, four, and five, and they all seem to come from some long range. Yeah, he favours it on his right foot there, but he didn't quite catch that one. Chelsea supporters just settling down in their seats again. They thought there was an opening there for their side to go ahead. Good ball again from Dennis White. He's had a very good game. I'm sure Terry Venables would have noted his name. And certainly the other midfield player who's definitely caught the eye, Eddie Newton. Uh, he might well be another one to, to be noted down for the future. Here's Burley. This is Clark. Burley goes forward again. And the crosses look... Oh, Schmeichel came a long way for that. It was meant for Steen. And the goalkeeper's throw over half the length of the pitch. Meant for Kanchelskis. Erland Jonsson. Hughes goes in on Kareen. Forcing him to clear into touch. Cantona. Irwin. Parker. Cantona steals in. Couldn't get the real power into the head of the Frenchman. Giving Kareem plenty of time. Good ball again, no into him. Much better service there. Eddie Newton ju just called in front of him. As you can see, Paul Parker, better ball, just floated beyond Newton. But Cantona having to spring from a standing position and couldn't quite get the power. the first real bellow of Uar Cantona from the uh, United contingent. He's been kept fairly subdued by Chelsea. And it brings a response of the blue flag from the other end of the stadium. Hughes. Giggs. Oh, he turned away. Ah. Well, obviously he thought he was checked. Stopped for a free kick and didn't get it. Spencer, Steen's on a run here. The arm was up from Pallister, but he wasn't offside. It's Bruce. Eddie Newton. Now that is offside, but there's no need to stop the game. David Ellerio, I think, has had a good match. Uh, he's done well with the advantage rule as well. There are occasions where there has been obvious fouls and free kicks, but he just waved play on. It's kept the game flowing. Now he's a very good referee and he's having a good match as you say. I think Jimmy Hill made the point, didn't he, that uh, tested early on. As I, made, as I said, referees sometimes are in cup finals. He chose to be firm and that seemed to set the tone. He's had no bother since. come to Parker now Kanchelskis Parker again but it sometimes hasn't gone where it's supposed to from this side of the pitch for United this is Steen oh it's a break on here this is a good chance for Chelsea it's Spencer John Spencer didn't run on for him it may still go for Wise or for Burley Peacock unmarked on this side of the area Wise Clark moving up and it still doesn't really run. Here's Eddie Newton to strike one. Comes back off the knees of Steve Bruce. Good spell for Chelsea. And that's the difference. They keep picking up those loose balls. You know, when, when it just rebounds from somebody, it's always a Chelsea player who gets onto the ball first. <laughs> Eddie Newton again involved in that move.
Hints. Can Shelska start to run on this side? Checks now to get it from Parker. And the attackers spread out the other way. Parker looks for Mark Hughes. Good ball on the chest. But good marking again. That Danish defender, Jakob Kielberg, is formidable on this form, and Hughes knows it. Parker. Cantona. Giggs coming in here, but there's nobody behind him for Manchester United. Clark, just uh, 12 minutes into the second half here at Wembley, and Glenn Hoddle's team would still appear to have the edge, but in a cup final, you've got a score to prove it. Kanchelskis, Cantona, Keane. Irwin, Ince, Chelsea get their tackles in coming from behind, that's a foul, Peacock and Spencer stretched it Ince there. I think Ince has been one of the few United players who, who, who has lived up to his reputation, I think he's been as involved as anyone in trying to get them going again. Is this too far for Irwin? Not the way he's shaping up to it, no, I, I don't... I think it's going to be a fantastic shot if he could beat with somebody well, of the quality of Kareem. Kareem's never been beaten by a shot from outside the area. Not since he joined Chelsea, only one that was deflected. And he keeps that record going from the Irishman. If anything was destined to give that ball into the back of the net, that was that comment, John. But fortunately, for your sake, from all Chelsea supporters, he was right behind it and saved it. I must admit, I was a bit relieved. Um, Reminds me, of course, that both those players will be in the World Cup, won't they? Irwin for Ireland and uh, Karin for Russia. And, uh, they're not the only ones on the pitch, either. This is Ince, and this is Giggs. Irwin. They try it the other way with Parker. It was Sinclair who came to meet him. Kanchelskis. Chelsea's line holding firm, but it's going to come back to Irwin. Keane. Parker. Cantona coming short. Jonsson comes with him, he finds Ince. Away by Sinclair. Now then, can Manchester United maintain the momentum? It's Parker sliding it through to Cantona. Here comes Hughes, he slipped at the crucial moment. But here's Irwin. Keane. Giggs. They're just starting to build something here, United, it would seem. Irwin. Oh! Oh! Eddie Newton on Dennis Irwin. A penalty in the cup final. Dennis Irwin brought down by Eddie Newton on the hour. And Manchester United have a penalty. Well, all the Chelsea players all put their hands on the head when the tackle went in. Look at that. What a, I mean, he's had such a good game, Eddie Newton, right in front of David Ellery. No alternative but to point to the spot. And what a vital moment. Well, the United players are looking at uh, the, their injured colleague, but it's Cantona, I think, who will take it. He's put the ball on the spot. And this will be interesting, won't it? The first Frenchman in a cup final against the first Russian goalkeeper in a cup final. And the last two penalties at Wembley in FA Cup finals have been saved. Dave Besant and Mark Crossley. But can Eric Cantona make his mark on the biggest occasion in the English game? Or can Karim...
Cantona made it look like a practice ground penalty. He just stroked it in the corner and sent Karim the wrong way. And with this goal, the Premiership champions take the lead in the FA Cup final. Poor Eddie Newton. Well, it was good to see a lot of his Chelsea colleagues give him a slap on the back there and say, forget it, let's get on with getting an equaliser. But Cantona, he has been quiet, but when it matters, a lot of pressure on him there. And he, as you say, did look very relaxed. I'm sure he wasn't, but he, he tucked it away. And as we said in that first half, Manchester United could make Chelsea rue those one or two chances that slipped away. Well, you could say it's been against the run of play, certainly on the first half, but I had the feeling that for the first time in the match, Manchester United were building something offside this time. Cantona... I mean, Ryan Giggs uh, made a good little run, didn't he, coming inside? He just toe-ended it to Irwin. You know, just through the legs there. It might not even have even got a touch. And, and there, Dennis Irwin getting the faintest of touches just before Eddie Newton. And I think that tackle and that goal now for Manchester United might well see your, your and Alan Hansen's wishes of Glenn Hoddle coming onto this pitch because uh, with 27, 8 minutes to go, I think the stage is set for him to try and conjure up an opening to get his side level. Well, let's just, just wait and see what happens in this Chelsea free kick first. Uh, often teams are at their most vulnerable when they've just scored. I wonder if that'll apply here. Wise will take it. Jonsson is forward. Kjellberg is there. Manchester United hold firm, but here's Eddie Newton. How he'd dearly love to put that right. Oh, look at this. It's four against one. It's Kanchelskis. They've got Hughes in the middle. And how did he do that? It's Giggs now. Well, what a waste. What a terrible, terrible waste. Dear, oh dear. I mean, Kachelskis was only a couple of yards away from being a, a great ball because it was on to knock it across early. It was just the rain and the wet dot that, that carried it beyond everyone. And then Giggs, with a second opportunity, again wasted it. But that is something Chelsea have got to be very, very careful of. Getting caught forward, panicking, chasing the game too quickly uh, and then suddenly you could be 2-0 down and the final is gone and, and that's why I think you know the manager and Glenn, Glenn Hoddle's got to get himself on and talk to them and get them to settle down they're calling for Hoddle I wonder if it'll happen soon here's Newton Burley coming in from the far side Chelsea on the attack one goal down penalty by Cantona who got that touch there to Ince and Cantona's in the game now with a vengeance look at this he's got two to his right but he's still got the ball, one to his right now, it's Kanchelskis, but here comes Karim. Well, I've got two observations to make about the penalty in a moment, but the game is moving so fast there's no time, it's Steen. He's gone past Bruce, Burley coming in far side, oh it was too long the cross. I just wanted to make a point about David Ellery's positioning on that penalty, Trevor. He was virtually standing within a yard of the incident. I know it was an obvious penalty, but it was an excellent piece of an example to all referees as to where they should be when the play's in that area of the pitch. But it just only highlights at the moment what an outstanding match he's had. He's kept control superbly and let the game flow when, it, when it's needed it. Oh, they're struggling here. It's Kanchelskis in. Oh, he's given another one. Sinclair. Kanchelskis, a second penalty to Manchester United. Well, I can't recall this happening in a cup final before. Sinclair charges Kanchelskis down, and within a matter of minutes, two penalty kicks to the same side. David Ellery wasn't as close this time, but he had no doubts. Chelsea are protesting. Well, I shouldn't have said anything, should I? Because I can't agree with that decision. Uh... The linesman, who was in a much better position, did not signal the penalty. David Ellery, who was 30 yards behind him, and couldn't have seen the, the incident as clearly as the linesman, gave the penalty himself. And I must say, I thought it was a wrong decision. If anything, it was, a, it was actually obstruction outside the area initially when they made contact. Well, we'll try it. Well, obviously, we will see it again when the penalty's been taken, uh, Trevor. Not for a moment, of course. Chelsea have made their protest long and loud. They agree with Trevor Brooking. He agrees with them. We'll see, but it's Cantona in another battle of wits against Dimitri Karim. And again, it's 2-0. And Eric Cantona.
Cantona. And look at Glenn Hoddle, he's got the tracksuit off now. Eric Cantona creates some sort of cup final record, stroking in two penalties. This time, the alleged offender is Sinclair. But all sorts of things are happening now. This is how he took the second one, and really it was just like the first one. He tucked it away in that corner, and Karin, who must have thought, well, he's going to change his mind this time, and he didn't. Well, it's all down to the guessing game, isn't it, when you get to that situation. Glenn Hoddle coming on now, but you have to say his side just lost their organisation those few minutes when the first goal went in. A, a, I felt they needed him straight away just to calm them down. They got caught a couple of occasions then with too many men forward. And you just feel at this moment two goals is, is too much for him to get his side back into it. But let's wait and see what happens. But that second penalty will be a discussion point, won't it? Glenn Hoddle is on the field, the player manager, Craig Burley is the man who's gone off. And uh, Eric Cantona, two goals in the space of, what, six minutes in this cup final, both from the penalty spot. Forward by Hoddle, offside Steen, I was about to say before the second one, just before anybody uh, makes a quirkish point about it, not the first foreigner to score from the penalty here, nor indeed for Manchester United, Arnold Muren put one away in 83, but I can't remember a player scoring two penalty kicks in the FA Cup final, certainly not at Wembley, but uh, Cantona has done that, he's on the pitch again now, and Chelsea don't quite know what's hit them. They feel a bad decision has hit them on the second one, but from being in charge of the game, or nearly at half-time, they find themselves two behind, and Cantona, who once scored a hat-trick here for Leeds in the charity shield, is chasing a hat-trick again at Wembley. And Manchester United, at the end of all that, are two goals nearer the double. Well, how fortunes changed, don't they? Um, that first half, this is the challenge, you see. He's, he's let it come across him, and then... When Kanchelskis makes the first touch, the first contact, look, he's outside the penalty. Hughes, yes! Mark Hughes again. The Wembley Warrior makes it 3-0. And surely now the double is secure. Mark Hughes. Chelsea deflated. And Manchester United go three goals clear. Well, three in nine minutes. And this time, oh dear me, you've got to feel sorry there for Sinclair. But Hughes now, what a record he's created. Four big Wembley occasions in one season. He's scored in all of them. And Chelsea, well... Forward by Hoddle, but surely he's come. Oh, look at this now. He's onside, Cantona. He was in his own half. And can, can he complete the hat-trick here against Kareen? And he rolls it the wrong side of the post. And you start to wonder how many Manchester United might score. You start to wonder whether Chelsea will fall apart completely. They certainly did on the third goal. What about that one, Trevor? Well, I don't know whether they are going to fall apart completely. They've had ten minutes when they have, and, and Glenn Hoddle and know now it's, it's too late to retrieve it. And It's a great shame, you know, they hadn't been in the situation before, Chelsea, have they? Psychologically, the, you know, the down feeling of, of conceding the opening goal, having played so well, and then suddenly chasing the game, getting called out, and Manchester United showing as a counter-attacking team that they, they, they've got no equals and since then they, they've just destroyed Chelsea haven't they Kanchelskis well this is Kanchelskis again goes behind Mark Hughes well I suppose when all this dies down which it doesn't threaten to just at the moment <laughs> The turning point will be seen to be the second penalty, and from what uh, you were saying, what we saw, it, it does appear it might have started outside the box. Here's Peacock for Chelsea. That's his cross, and it's too long. Free kick to Manchester United, who went from 0-0 to 3-0 between the 61st 
around 69th minutes and here's how they broke away again now watch number six here Sinclair he seems to have the situation under control but the ball bounced off his shins and the worst person to give it to in that situation is Mark Hughes because he's deadly at Wembley particularly I mean Sinclair yeah, we'll rue that mistake, but I mean, it was the second goal that was critical for this match, because 1-0, trying to reorganise reorganize themselves, Chelsea, but to concede a second one before Hodler got on himself, I mean, after that, there was no coming back, and I, I think the second penalty will be the one that everyone will be arguing well, about. Well, Jonsson must be careful here, Trevor, he's, he's already been booked, and uh, Chelsea are in disarray. The, uh, the game took on a completely unexpected phase, and Manchester United went from a nervous 0-0 to a flourishing 3-0 in nine minutes. And we're now starting to think about the <laughs> biggest Wembley wins in cup finals. They're one behind their 4-0 against Brighton at the moment, 11 years ago. But don't let's uh, be too unkind to Chelsea because they had the better of the first half and they were blitzed in that incredible period of play. Cantona again. Hughes again. Oh, the back heel. I think we might get that little bit of arrogance and a few flicks coming out of this Manchester United side with it with the cushion of 3-0. Of and, uh, you know, it, it is... I mean, credit to them for the season, but Chelsea had a plan. Get men back, let United come on to them. They then conceded the goal. They abandoned ship, charged forward, and Manchester United just punished them for the suddenly the space that opened up for them on the counter-attack. Well, that's right. I mean, we said, didn't we, that really it should have been 2-0 before that when they were four against one United at one point and didn't get the ball, or Kanchelskis' ball didn't quite reach its target. So the thing is, in the two league games, Trevor, Chelsea were never behind. They never had to deal with that situation. It is a learning experience. You know, they've, they've had an excellent second half of the season, but they're going to have to learn from this, particularly in Europe, where, you know, you've got to be patient and you mustn't then chase games if you concede one goal. Well, you might get the kettle on a bit earlier this year because we've been used to having extra time at Wembley. I don't think we're going to get it today somehow. 17 minutes to go and Chelsea three down. This is Ince. Hughes. That's an incredible record of Hughes's now, isn't it? On this pitch. Offside flags up here. It was Eric Cantona who drifted. It's that linesman this side who was so near to that second penalty decision. He didn't put his flag up. It was David Ellery that made the choice. Great ball by Hoddle to Steen there, though. This is Wise. Hoddle is coming in from the far side himself. And there's the early header by Peacock. And Peter Schmeichel makes from Peacock perhaps his best save of the afternoon. He had to. The ball was supplied by Hoddle initially in that attack. And it's a corner to Chelsea. Played short. Jonsson and Kielberg waiting in the middle. This is Wise. Hoddle looking for space, finding it. Number 20. Little touch of skill. But beaten by Ince. Oh, it's Giggs on the right wing. And you might see a flourish about Manchester United now. Look at this. Can Schelskis up against uh, Sinclair who's suddenly having a harrowing time at left back and it's uh, Jonsson who cuts that out, it was meant for Hughes quarter of an hour to go Peacock for Chelsea Steen wide to clock this is Wise Good cross, actually, and Glenn Hoddle comes in on it. And they still chunk Matt Busby's name at the Manchester United end. He would be a proud man today, wouldn't he, if Manchester United are going to go on and achieve what they couldn't quite do in his uh, managerial time, the late Samat, and win the double. That's the way it's looking at the moment, but this is Spencer for Chelsea, whose fans are keeping their spirits up. But Manchester United dictate the final now. Cantona. 
Oh, there's a runner on the far side, it's Keane. Hughes comes to join him. Giggs in the middle. Ince wants it square. Giggs. And Glenn Hoddle slides it in to Dennis Wise. This is Clark. Hoddle. I think we're going to see Tony Cascarino any minute, but this is Peacock meantime for Chelsea. Parker gets a foot in. Cascarino is the second outfield sub for Chelsea and he's waiting to come on on the far side. Meantime, it's Cantona to Kanchelskis. And there goes Kanchelskis again. Hughes comes towards the near post. Giggs closing in far side. Hoddle to Wise. Just under 13 minutes to go. 3-0 the score. There goes Steen. Pallister. Well, Manchester United are taking a breather before finding Hughes. Giggs is standing right over there on the left wing. This is Irwin. Now it's Giggs. Can Cantona. This is Kanchelskis. And I think now we can see the uh, second substitutes board being held up. Mark Steen, having played only his second game in nine weeks, will leave the field. Number 21. And he'll be replaced by a man who is possibly playing his last game for Chelsea, Tony Cascarino, who I believe is being given a free transfer at the end of the season, who will be playing in the World Cup for Ireland, by the way, probably. He gets on to support Glenn Hoddle who brought himself on earlier so two subs on for Chelsea who are 3-0 down this is Wise and now it's Peacock And uh, Hughes out to Giggs. Just watching Ryan Giggs makes me wonder <laughs> how strange football can be. George Best never played in an FA Cup final, did he? And Ryan Giggs looks as though he's going to collect an FA Cup winner's medal to go with his championship medal in the same season. The elusive double, they used to call it. Manchester United look as though they're going to join that illustrious list of five other clubs to have achieved that particular target. Liverpool, the last ones in 86, of course, with Alan Hansen. Arsenal earlier with Bob Wilson. And Spurs, the others this century. Here's Wise. Into Peacock, chance here for Chelsea. There's the drive, and it was close from Spencer. I don't think anyone would begrudge Chelsea perhaps getting a, a goal for their supporters because they had that excellent first half. The goal didn't come, and they had Spencer trying to get on the score sheet, but they've had to rue those chances, haven't they? Because Manchester United have made them pay very, very dearly. Free kick to Chelsea. I suppose I ought to balance it up. I did congratulate David Ellery on his positioning on the first penalty. I do agree with you. He was a long way off the second one, Trevor, when he made the decision. Whether it be proved right or wrong, he was behind the play. Well, he was, and the fact that the linesman much closer didn't give the decision. And I, I, I was very surprised when I saw him signal for the penalty, and uh, I'm sure that one will be argued about. I think we might see Brian McClare in a minute uh, come on for Manchester United. Uh, loyal servant to Alex Ferguson he got the vote over Robson today as the second sub
There's Brian. It's his last appearance, not on the pitch, I hasten to add, but uh, as a Manchester United squad member. Looks as though he's going to go and manage Middlesbrough next season. But he's been up for the FA Cup three times in his career. And it looks today as if Manchester United are going to win it for the eighth time. That would equal the record of Tottenham Hotspur. They've already equaled Arsenal's record of 12 final appearances today, United. But of course, the one we're all going to be talking about in about nine minutes' time, barring miracles, is the double. It's a good ball. Hoddle. Clark. Oh dear. Yeah, and the spirit, not surprising, now gone out of the, the Chelsea play. They know it's beyond them, and uh, it's just the man uh, ticking those minutes away now. Manchester United, I think we all should congratulate them on achieving that double. Uh, it isn't easy. Ken Bates will be very disappointed to see his side now 3-0 down, but they've just got to use it as experience. See what Manchester United have done these last couple of seasons. They've thrilled us all with their style of football, and I'm sure they're going to be a danger at every trophy next season as well. Well, Paul Ince is still going at 100 miles an hour. I don't know whether Terry Venables will ask him to play again on Tuesday, but um, there's a spring in the step of Manchester United, obviously, now that wasn't there in the first half when Chelsea looked to be making more of it, more than a game of it. Here's Wise. Nothing more dramatic in football than a penalty, is there really? And we had two there in six minutes in the cup final. Here's Wise. And the clock ticks away at Wembley. It's ticking away everywhere, I guess. Here's Ince. Johnson, uh, Johnson up to Cascarino, who hasn't had much of a touch since he came on. He'll get one now from Hoddle, though. He's number nine, Tony Cascarino. Hoddle is 20. Two players have just joined the uh, proceedings. Well, Glenn will be somewhat stunned by what happened in that spell. Oh, Giggs might cut this out. Should have cut it out, really. Might still get there ahead of Clark. Tangle, tangle. Poor old Dimitri Karin there has actually got uh, two penalties against him. One mistake, had no chance, did he, with the three goals? And uh, will be, I'm sure, very frustrated that having had a quiet first half, suddenly, in the space of, as you say, nine or ten minutes, he'd he seen himself picking the ball out of the back of the net three times. Well, it seemed as if Cantona was destined to write his name across this season in many different ways. And uh, having won two championships with Manchester United, he's now going to pick up an FA Cup winner's medal with two penalty kicks that he just stroked in as though it was morning practice. He's offside this time. Really wasn't in any way ner unnerved or phased by having to take two. And Alex Ferguson will now give his two substitutes a taste of the cup final action. Lee Sharp, who looks thrilled to bits, and Brian McClare. The players going off are Kanchelskis and Irwin. kick against Pallister. Is there a consolation in this final for Chelsea with their supporters gathered at that left-hand end of the stadium that they're attacking? They'd love to see a goal, something to go home and remember as Wise and Peacock gather on the ball. Wise will take, lobs it forward, Spencer, and it's Keane, corner. Four minutes to go, and Chelsea seeking a consolation
Jonsson. I suppose having Cascarino on is quite handy for corners now, but uh, they won't get another one there. We well, caused Luton uh, problems, didn't he, in the semi-final, winning a, a lot of the possession there. But uh, Roy Keane getting a knock there, getting a bit of treatment. But I think Cascarino was on the bench today because of Costine and Spencer's pace they thought would be more effective against Bruce and Pallister, who, who perhaps would relish the challenge of, of competing in the air with Cascarino. And as I say, by the time he came on, the cause was lost. I was just thinking what that makes this a great game, Trevor, you know, football. We were sitting here, what was it, five weeks ago, watching Manchester United play Oldham in the semi-final. And what was it, 40 seconds to go, Oldham were winning 1-0. And Manchester United looked a long way away from where they are today. Well, I think that was that, the most dramatic moment, wasn't it, for, I think, for the season. Not only did it, it turn around United's season, they went on to win the league. And then, of course, poor Oldham never recovered from that devastating blow and, and they're in the first division next season and uh, I'm sure that volley will be repeated many many times because it was I think United's chance and here they are clinching the double in the, as I said at the very beginning of the afternoon fitting in a way it should happen in the year of uh, the passing of the legendary Sir Matt Busby who built this club out of the rubble of 1945 and then of course rebuilt it after Munich and we'll never know whether the team killed there would have won the double will we here's Spencer Cascarino oh little ball in Dennis Wise oh. well he might well have pulled one back there the Chelsea captain that's a great move uh, built right from down in front of us here a flowing move down the left hand side Cascarino good first touch into Dennis Wise and had goal written all over it, but perhaps that just sums up the afternoon for poor Chelsea. They couldn't put the ball in the net despite their good approach play. And in the end, that 3-0 scoreline is, in a few years' time, going to be a bit harsh, I think. Yes, I would go along with that. Um, but uh, the story of the day will now be all about the double, won't it? Not so much about the first half. That'll probably get forgotten, except in the minds of Chelsea fans and their players. Eric Cantona. There's a real red celebration going on at the right-hand end of the stadium now. In anticipation of the final whistle and what it means to this big club. Hot. at the tiredness there I, I feel sorry for Sinclair he's really been involved unwittingly perhaps in two of the goals after starting the match so well this is Keane Giggs has gone to the left. McClare is now trotting down the centre, the substitute wearing number nine. Here he is. It's now only a matter, really, of what David Ellery does about stoppage time. This is Hughes. I think I'm right in saying this will be the most convincing cup final win since Manchester United beat Brighton in that replay 4-0 this is Cascarino Wise and here's Peacock Wise again onside Cascarino blocked by Schmeichel Chelsea have had a couple of little chances, haven't they? Or oh, big chances in the last couple of minutes, Trevor. No, it should have scored. That's, I mean, it was a great run from Dennis Wider, who I think has had a good game for Chelsea. Give an encouraging wave to his supporters. Tony Cascarino just stretching for the shot. Somehow tried to hit it at the near post, whereas a, a shot towards the far post for people running in would have been better. Erland Jonsson up for this, well cleared by Inter. had a fine match for Manchester United. 
and that was well won back by Eddie Newton, curled in again, here comes Johnson, Keane heads out this time, corner again on the far side, Chelsea typically and creditably ending the match with their tails up, but that's how they started it, but a lot's happened in between, Peacock, way by Bruce, Glenn Hoddle, how long will he go on playing, I wonder? It's a stage he's graced many times, Wembley. Look at Ince again there, the man to get the foot in, and uh, Eddie Newton stumbling a bit, and Ince is the furthest forward again. Chelsea still at it, that's Newton floating it for Cascarino, two unmarked in the middle, surely now, there's the shot on the turn by Spencer, and Schmeichel has reserved his best work. Well, it's been reserved for him until the last few minutes. Corner again. Played short. Hoddle. Now Cantona. Now he's got players joining him. One of them is Mark Hughes. Now two to the left. Oh, and onside. Paul Ince for Manchester United. Can he finish it here? Ince. Oh, and selfish. Brian McClare. Wonderfully unselfish piece of play by Paul Ince of Manchester United in England to put this smile on the face of the manager to give McClare the chance to score and to confirm that Manchester United have won the double. Out came Kareen, round him went Ince, he saw Clark was there, so he just rolled it back and McClare accepts the greatest gift of all, an open goal in a cup final. It's 4-0, Trevor. Well, rubbing salt in the wound there, Manchester United, because Chelsea so close a couple of times at the other end, although they probably feel now that they could be playing until Sunday morning and still not be able to get the ball in the net. Goes up the other end, Eddie Newton tries to play the offside. The linesman said when the ball was played it wasn't, and Paul Lentz sets up Brian McClare for his goal. Here they go again, it's Hughes. We're well into stoppage time, as you can see. Fourth minute, in fact. And uh, Hughes has gone down injured. And there it is, the achievement is nearly unique, the praise is nearly unanimous, the double is definitely Manchester United's. The sixth club to achieve this remarkable feat. Chelsea crestfallen, cheerful in the first half, but cruelly played out of things in nine minutes in the second half. Consolation for them, but jubilation for Manchester United. And already the manager who's made history, Alex Ferguson, is talking to Tony Gubber. Alex Ferguson, many, many congratulations to you and Manchester United. A tremendously, personally emotional moment for you. Oh, it's a marvellous, marvellous. Second half we played like Manchester United. We got a break. Get, to get in front was ideal for us. Once we got in front, we had no problem. Perhaps a little bit of sadness, though, that this is the year that Sir Matt Busby died and was not here to see United finally achieve the double. Well, his family are here, and they'll be proud of the players today because Sir Matt would have been. Just talk us through the match briefly, Alex. Were you surprised at how difficult Chelsea made it for you in the first hour? The first half, they, they caused us a lot of problems. I felt we were, I felt our shape wasn't right. We were no spreading the game. We couldn't get Ryan Giggs the ball. We said at half time to narrow Ryan in a bit so he could get on the ball and get some uh, feel of it and start running at them. And that was the key to it, really. Once we get the spread in our game, Ryan on one side, then Andre on the other side, the balance was better and then we started opening up a bit better. Did you try to pep them up at half-time, was that what you... Yeah, I think that we made the points. We made the points about the tactical thing, which was vital because without tactics you won't win the modern games. Everybody said you're the best team all season, but of course you've got to go out and do it and prove it and win it, and now you have the Championship and well, the FA Cup. They've done it the right way. Any, yeah. any disappointment that maybe the treble got away? Well, I'm, I'm happy to win a double every year. <laughs> Quite rightly so, thanks very much, Alex. Alex Ferguson now a double winner north and south of the border. That's a wonderful achievement for a manager, the manager of the year already, of course. 
And I also think, speaking just from memory, that's the biggest cup final win at Wembley. It equals United's replay win over Brighton. And 4-0 uh, is so emphatic, and the poor losers, Chelsea, will have to make the trip up the steps first to receive their medals. They certainly played their part in this final in the first half, and Glenn Hoddle will be one who will make sure that everybody keeps their head up as they go up their stairs, because Dennis Wise, the captain, and his team have come a long way since they were won from bottom on Boxing Day. They can build on this, even though the disappointment instantly will be hard to take, and their supporters are giving them the sort of reception that you would expect. They're in Europe anyway, don't forget, Chelsea. They will play in the European Cup Winners' Cup next season as beaten finalists as Dennis Wise leads them up to receive their losers' medals from Her Royal Highness, the Duchess of Kent. Words of consolation from Ken Bates, the chairman. They acquitted themselves well in the first half, Trevor. We should say that again. They did do that. You know, it's great a moment to, to play in a cup final they've got to learn from it that's the important thing that's what I think Glenn Huddle will, will emphasize to them they had a game plan it worked extremely well they conceded a penalty just a lunge in from Eddie Newton and, and that was the opening and Manchester United then just showed their quality because once Chelsea abandoned that plan Manchester United capitalized suddenly on the space that opened up and showed all their qualities and why they have been such a terrific side the last two seasons well is that Glenn Huddle's farewell to Wembley as a player if it is, he certainly graced the stadium. But now, as Chelsea acknowledge their supporters, we're going to see a moment of history for Manchester United. Steve Bruce following in the footsteps of some famous Manchester United captains who have received the FA Cup at Wembley. Johnny Carey, Noel Cantwell, Martin Buchan, and then on three occasions, Brian Robson. But he is unique in that he's the first... seem like a cliche we often use but I can assure you it couldn't happen to a nicer fella and a better professional Brian Robson has handed the job on to somebody worthy of it and Steve Bruce now goes up for a moment that he and his colleagues and Manchester United fans worldwide have always wanted to experience clubs in the world achieves one of the most precious feats in the world of football Manchester United have won the double and they've equaled Tottenham Hotspur's record of eight FA Cup wins putting their names in history now and Alex Ferguson who himself will receive a medal is now the custom for managers but uh, these players have broken new ground in the long and illustrious history of a club that has supporters associations on every continent there goes the manager at the end well how many more trophies is Alex Ferguson going to win Martin Edwards the chairman congratulating him there He's won a major trophy in every one of the last five seasons, two this time. It's the double. It's the double that teams thought were it was impossible at one time in modern football. Spurs proved that wrong. Arsenal did it again. Liverpool, and now, with Brian Rossen only an onlooker today, Alex Ferguson's Manchester United have won the Championship and the FA Cup in a season when, as Tony Gubber said, they nearly got the treble, and now Tony's got the winning captain, Steve Bruce, with him. Steve, what an eventful afternoon. For 60 minutes, Chelsea made it very difficult. Yeah, all credit to them. I don't, uh, I don't think they deserved the four-zipping, but uh, 
Uh, the lads stuck at it, and that's what we've done all season. We've dug in there when, it, when we haven't really played that well, but we're always likely to do something at the other end, and that proved the point today. It's been a long season, and were you disappointed when you came out here and saw the conditions? And no, I think everybody was pleased. I know the supporters were a little bit disappointed, but I think I'd rather have it like that than 90 degrees. One or two battering tackles, you got a yellow card yourself. Yeah. A few people lost their footing once or twice. It was always going to be awkward. Well, it was always going to be awkward, but a final's a final. You've got to put your foot in it. You don't expect uh, to do anything else, but uh, all credit to the lads. And well done, Chelsea, as well, for having such a go. What's the overriding emotion at the moment? One of euphoria or one of relief? Well, I mean, we'll probably see it later on when we've sunk in. I mean, it's, uh, it's a fantastic achievement by the club, and uh, all the credit goes to the players, really. Alex Ferguson, a tribute to him. Well, what can you say about the gaffer? He's been fantastic. I mean, he's, he's won everything and uh, he's immortal now, they say. Well Thank done. Much. Thanks. So, the celebrations can now start in earnest. Just to remind you again of the match facts, it was nil-nil after an hour and then Eric Cantona there slotted in two penalties in six minutes. The first clear-cut, the second disputed. Three minutes after that, Mark Hughes made it 3-0 and in the third minute of stoppage time, Brian McClare coming on as a late sub, courtesy of Paul Ince, made it four and that's the emphatic way in which this huge organisation called Manchester United put their name on the FA Cup and completed the League and Cup double. I wonder what that'll do to the share price. Chelsea's own particular valuation of themselves need not be too severe. Dennis Wise's team kept the celebrating Manchester players at bay, well more than that really, for an hour, but were then overwhelmed when all the incidents started to happen. On cup final day, the faces tell the story. Just a final word then, Trevor. Glenn Hoddle doing his best to raise spirits in defeat, but the story is all about Manchester United and the double. Yes, I like it to Chelsea, but as you say now, it's a fraud Manchester United for what they've achieved the last couple of seasons. We've got a lot of flair, a lot of ability in the team, in the squad even. I'm sure they're determined to do well in Europe next year, but I'm sure also the domestic trophies would be just as prominent, and they're going to be the team that everyone has to beat. And, and hopefully now the youngsters that have been watching them over the last couple of seasons will want to go out and practice and emulate the type of flair that we've seen them produce. There'll be a few lads up and down the country practising taking penalties uh, in the back garden tomorrow morning, won't they? After seeing Cantona stroke those in as easy as you like. But it is a team full of stars, you're so right. And it's a team, really, of which we've yet to see the best. That is the exciting thing about Manchester United. A dynasty has now truly been launched. Um, they said that in the days of Matt Busby, and they're going to say it again now in the time of Alex Ferguson. You just don't know how far they can go. He doesn't even know. But I tell you what, when he signed Cantona out of the blue, what was it, 18 months ago, nobody quite knew the impact that Frenchman was going to have on this side and this club. Well, for an hour, he, he had a quiet game, even he would have admitted it. And then when the pressure was on, Manchester United needed to score from that penalty. He strolled up, tucked it away put it in the same position a few minutes later and suddenly they started to knock the ball around as United have done all season and he pulls the strings but there is a lot of young players coming through there's competition for places throughout the club which means it's healthy and even when they don't play well as, and don't flow as they can for an hour when suddenly they scent victory they go on and that 4-0 score line does look harsh to Chelsea but just shows the qualities United have once they, as I say, get their noses in front Nice clear-cut cup final this year, no extra time, no replays, an emphatic victory, even though it took them an hour to really get going. Well, the fans have got going now, all right. Let's hear the other side of the story. Glenn Hoddle is talking to Clive Tilsley. Glenn, that was a very cool result. I think it was, yeah. Um, you 
all credit to Manchester United once they uh, went 1 0 up, they were the better side, but until then I felt really that uh, they were twisted on a penalty decision. I haven't seen it, it looked like a penalty to me. The problem was, you know, when Gavin's hit the bar and didn't go in the first half, I think, uh, you know, that was obviously a, a turning point for us. But at half time, I felt we were, you know, worthy to be 1 0 up. It may seem a strange question to ask of a manager beaten by such a score, but were you pleased with the way your team played? Well, I was pleased and I was proud of the way they played. Uh, we never stopped battling. We lost their shape a little bit at the end because we were chasing the game and Manchester United uh, had got too much skill on the ball, really, to, uh, to be doing that. But, you know, I think it, it turned on the crossbar and it turned on the penalty decision and that's what football was like. But once they got you where they wanted you, they did play like champions. Well, that, you know, they've proved that time and time again uh, over the season that uh, if they do get, you, get themselves one or two goals up, then there's, uh, they're unstoppable. Chelsea in better shape than they were 12 months ago? Well, certainly, that's one way of looking at it, but at the moment we're obviously very uh, dejected in the fact that we've lost. We don't like losing matches. Thanks for joining us, Glenn. Cheers, Mike. Yes, I think... Uh, Clive Tilt has got that right there to Glenn Hoddle. Chelsea are in better shape than they were a year ago. They're certainly in better shape than they were six months ago. Uh, one from bottom at Christmas. And he has started something there, of which we shall see the fruits later. For the moment, the stadium is reverberating to a gigantic Manchester United celebration. the reason why so the scenes outside tell the story Manchester United have won 4-0 and they've won the double So another great day for Manchester United in the end, but you wouldn't have thought 4-0 at half-time, Alan. No, there wasn't four goals in it. You know, they got the first goal and, and Chelsea went chasing the game and they virtually fell apart. But Manchester United haven't played well in the day. They've won by four goals, they've won the double. And as we were saying before the programme, they've got something, they've got resilience. That when the going gets tough, they've got this bond that seems to get everybody together and they, they say, right, we're going to dig in deep and we're going to fight our way out of trouble. And I think that's what they did today. It'll go in the record books, double 4-0, won't it? That's, that's, that's what we'll say in five story, years' time, that's yeah. for sure. But it turned on the penalties, Jim, didn't it? I think that we can yeah. look at them now. It, but, it um, turned on a, a couple of mistakes from two young players, really, of, of Chelsea. You know, yeah. Two of their youthful players who've not had the experience that other players have had, especially the United team of this level of the game. Yeah. And, and the first one, I mean, was just a wild challenge. It started from yards away. I mean, it, I mean, there was no, there was no doubt that the referee was going to give a penalty no. in that season. Pity for Newton, wasn't it? Because he, he, he played stain. so well he's up. He's got to stay on his feet. It's in the, in the box, but it's a reckless challenge. I thought Irwin did particularly well because he saw him come and played around the corner. But in the, in the box, you've got to stay on your feet. You've got to close them down. And it was a reckless challenge. And at it 22 years of age is the answer to that first Wembley experience. He played you know. so well up to that point. He'd done very so well, well, but when you're 22, you know, I mean, that sounds old in some terms, and in football terms, it's still very young, especially for Wembley appearances. Yeah. And just one moment's relaxed concentration like that, lost his head, went for it, virtually decided the game. Because until that point, Manchester United had done nothing to win it. Mm -hmm. This is the penalty. Nice and easy. Yeah. No, a no lot of worries. composure. Yeah. You'd, you'd like no, to get, yeah. no nerves, but you'd like to get paid what Cantona gets paid for just going on and doing that to win a game, yeah. wouldn't you? With a hundred, with eighty thousand people here watching, and the middle on television, the <laughs> I might manage a side foot in the corner myself. Now Don't the second penalty. <laughs> this was the big doubt in, in many people's minds. Certainly Trevor Brookings, I think, one or two here. Yes. Let, let's have a look yeah. at it again at the incident. And it's played through. He comes across him. Sinclair, this is. I think it's maybe just shoulder to shoulder. Sinclair. The most important thing. Have another, me, look, have another yeah. look He's He's played it past them. I think the right arm's come out. We've seen it a million times, the right arm coming out. Did he make the most of it? Can't oh, definitely. definitely. The, yeah. the yeah. point is the linesman was closer. But the linesman did nothing. The did initial nothing, thought no. was because Jonsson came across and complained to the linesman. But the lines, it wasn't the linesman, it was the referee who seemed to be quite a long way away. Any p way penalty yeah, but, it was. But what do you think? Says we're quite close and the audience at home are quite close and having seen it now. 
Uh, if, if I'd been manager of Chelsea when that had my heart would have gone in my mouth. You know, sitting a ma even farther away. You thought uh, a penalty, penalty did you, Jim? I thought that you can get a penalty given for that. Yeah. I mean, mm. it's, it's, you can't blame the ref. I don't care how far away it was. His judgment wasn't at fault on that. Uh, I think it's one of those that could have gone both ways. Harsh, though, though, wasn't it? Because you so see that sort of challenge time and time again without penalty decisions yeah. being given. I think if the linesman doesn't give it, then the referee doesn't. Give it. Because the referee's 35 yards away. How can he tell what's gone? The linesman's 10 yards away. Surely the linesman's the one to give it. He so should look right away to the linesman. No penalty. So that was harsh and that was de We're definitely We're 50 tough. yards away and yet we've got an opinion on it. Judgment is not necessarily about how near you are, it's how accurate you are. And I'm saying that, that you cannot um, really criticise that referee for calling that a penalty. He, the surely, ball's been pushed on and he came across him with his arm, surely, which is a push. Surely, if, a push. surely if the referee's 35 yards away and the linesman's 10 yards away, he's got to look at the linesman before he gives a penalty. This is the who, sort of discussion who that's going on in every household in the listen, land right Who now. will they blame <laughs> in 10 years' time, the linesman or the referee, for that decision? He takes the ultimate responsibility. Well, the penalty went in with ease, but let's hear from Ray Stubbs because he's got some more uh, interviews for us. Six double winners here. Dennis Irwin, congratulations. Yeah, what does it feel like to be a double winner? Absolutely brilliant. Uh, Going to have a great night tonight. I uh, don't know if we played that well, but never mind. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll move along the line. Gary Pallister, if ever there was a game with two halves, it was that one. Yeah, it definitely is the old cliche, isn't it? Um, we never got you started in the first half. You, um, you, we had to you, put things right uh, in the dressing room. Clear, um, but I think we did that. So, Roy Keane, what was said at half time? I uh, just uh, passed the ball a bit quicker, really, and uh, just gaffer to go a pal in there. It's taking a bit long on the ball, but we knew we didn't play well in the first half. I don't, I don't think we played that well in the second half. But looking enough, we uh, managed to score four goals. It's not bad. <laughs> Paul Ince, everyone was saying you're one of the players that played well for 90 minutes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't know how to talk about myself really, you know, but I'll, nah, seriously, uh, as I said, we didn't play well first half, second half we got uh, a game a bit, but uh, we were lucky to get a 4-0 scoreline, I think. What does it feel like to be a double winner? It must be one of the ultimate in sporting achievements. As I said, there's not many teams who have done it, uh, we're one of the uh, four and uh, it's a great feeling. Brian McClare coming on and scoring a goal, you've had a happy afternoon. Well, I thought me and Sharp had changed the game actually. <laughs> <laughs> Usual lucky manager, great substitution, you know, struggling at 3-0, bring us on 4-0. Can I say, game's off. finished at that, isn't it? Paul Parker, what such an occasion, it must be magnificent to be here this afternoon. Yeah, right. Yes it is, leave me by myself, eh? Um, I don't know, I went, ball night for a lot. I went until tomorrow morning and they're really sinking in, after a few pints of course. This team has really achieved so much. This team has achieved so much. It must be great to play with all these guys. Some of them, the five are here, they're not great on it to play with, but the rest of them are great. <laughs> I know you want to celebrate in the dressing room. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much. They're in great spirits, as you would imagine. Now, there's one or two people at home still in doubt as to whether that was a penalty or not, apparently. So we're going to show it one more time. Just one more time. Just one more time. You sure it's not for us just to decide finally? Some well, people would say this is a shoulder charge. Pushing, shoulder is, a, shoulder. pushing is a penalty offence. He's outside the box as is well. That a push? He's outside the box. Is, well, that's another argument, but it's a push. But We're talking it's about. It's not a penalty if he's outside the box. I thought no. he was just he trying pushed. to get past him. It's Sinclair. I think that. Well, I mean, I'm only making the case for the referee, whether he's a yard away or as close as we are now, that is a push. That is a shoulder charge. And, and if you put your arm up. You and are. You risk having a penalty. If I'd I have been the manager, you. if I'd have been the manager, my heart would have gone in my mouth. But I, I'm, I'm saying it in was the modern game, the arm automatically comes up. All right, we've had plenty of opinion <laughs> on that. We close <laughs> that particular discussion oh, yeah. now. If you don't mind. <laughs> now, two of the heroes of the game today, Cantona and Hughes. Let's hear from them. Eric, I'm going to say this very slowly. I know you're going to yeah. try some English for me. What is it like to play for Manchester United on a day like this? It's, it's wonderful to play from Manchester United all the season. Because uh, I think we're, at the moment we are the best team in the country. Probably in Europe, we'll see next season. I, I hope we win the. It's, uh, Were you nervous about the penalties? Were you nervous? Who is? Who? Were you nervous before you took the penalties? No. No? no? no. Cool. Yeah, it's cool. If I'm nervous, I, uh, I leave the ball. Uh, for another one. <laughs> and Eric, you've had such a great season. Have you understood what winning the double means, the league and the cup? A great double. Yes, I think uh, if, if I, uh, if I uh, remember well, it's, uh, Liverpool, Liverpool is the last uh, team to win the, the double. So we, 
now we are the, the team who will, will, uh, <laughs> will be the king in uh, Europe. Eric, thank you very much. Uh, to a magnifique. <laughs> like Liverpool in uh, ages. Like ages. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Mark Hughes, what's it like to play with such a guy? Oh, it's fantastic. I mean, uh, it took a lot of courage to, to take the ball um, for the penalties, but um, because of the, the man he hits, he, he relishes uh, opportunities like that and he, and he stuck them away. There wasn't, wasn't any doubt in any of your minds that he would have scored them. Now, your Wembley record for goal scoring, sensational. Yeah, it's been quite good um, over the years and this year uh, in particular. I was, I was very pleased to get the goal. Um, I've been happy with my form this year and it's a nice way to finish the season. Well, I think we're going to show you something now that you'll, you'll quite enjoy. Can you talk us through it? Yeah, well, I think uh, yeah, he slipped there and it just dropped nicely for me and uh, I could see I had a clear run and goal and uh, I just tried to make a good connection just on it. it as well. I miss kicked it, yeah. <laughs> no, it was, it, was, it was a lovely feeling because I think that killed the game off, really. Incredible three goals in nine minutes. Well, that's right. I mean, uh, we could see after the second goal that they, they were really down after that and there was no way they were going to come back, really. Congratulations. Just very quickly, Peter Schmeichel's here. He didn't have an awful lot to do, but in the second half, he had a couple of saves towards the end. Yeah, we were 3 0 up at the time, and uh, we had, I thought the player sort of relaxed a bit, um, and then I had to do my bit. What's it like to be a double winner here in England? Oh, it's, it's unbelievable. I mean, I I've, I've just think back on, on, on so many times I've sit in front of the television screen watching this actually uh, uh, FA Cup final, uh, and having the dream I wish I, I could play in one uh, one day and now I've played in one I've won it and uh, won the double at the same time it's just uh, incredible Congratulations thank you very much for joining us Thank you As the foreign thank players you. have always really seen this on television over the years I expect when they were kids and things they know just what this this is all about here today It's a great place to come and play of all the stadiums in the world that you'd, any top class player would want to play it'd be here this is something special this competition the FA Cup final and see the celebrations there and quite rightly so apparently by the way it was a penalty the second one <laughs> um, <laughs> <Was it? laughs> yeah, um, let's look at the fourth goal because four went in and Ince was particularly generous um, yeah he, actually he was one of United's better players and he gets forward he had a good ball in from Hughes Karin comes out and I thought Ince does really well here great composure goes past him totally unselfish yeah. and he puts in a plate for Jimmy's mate Brian McClare was that unselfish or